Hi, everybody. This is Ray. This is Life and Vibe. And today I just wanted to cover Foodie Beauty's most recent upload. And everybody might remember that our friend, Foodie Beauty, Everyday Miriam, has been preparing for the holy month of Ramadan. And uh, Ramadan is due to be potentially starting on March the 11th, that's Monday, or Tuesday, March the 12th, depending on when the new moon is seen. And Foodie is looking forward to, I see in Kuwait, 14 hours of fasting a day, from where I can see on the map. And so, as you know, she's been preparing pretty hard uh, for this uh, festivity, uh, as seen by this grocery haul that she just uploaded yesterday. All right, so this is um, round one of this haul. Um, it's going to be a lot of stuff and i'm not looking forward to organizing it and putting it away but that's a big job i have to do before ramadan so um so yes we have a couple cases of water here at the back those blue cases are water um here we have some long shelf life full fat milk really good for making um arabic desserts like um mahalabiya which is like a milk pudding and rice pudding have some eggs they had a huge sale on the vegetables, so I got a bunch of kilos of eggplant because I plan on making a lot of marinated eggplant. Okay, so as you can see, Foodie had quite the grocery haul there, but uh, she needed to take some time and obviously... It was a lot of work trying to put all those groceries away. So she had to turn around and uh, celebrate with a little bit of a sandwich. And that's what we're going to look at today is the 12-inch chicken teriyaki sub sandwich that Foodie needed to then buy and enjoy today since she is unable to cook anything because it must have been very exhausting especially with that sciatica that she has let's just take a look at what she's got going on today well if you put too many things on your sub it's chaos hi welcome back to another video all right welcome back to another video um uh-oh um Sub stop. I'm just making sure this one is mine because Salah and I both got the same kind of sub but different toppings. Is this mine? Yeah. Yeah. So I got chicken teriyaki, one of my favorite kinds. That's Are they two subs? Are they six inches each? I don't really eat subs very often. Is that a six inch? That almost looks like 12 inches to me. Is that two six inch halves there? What is on the top? Oh my goodness. How is she? She has all that bread and eggs. And all those fresh vegetables that she purchased yesterday. And she is sitting down to a 12-inch chicken teriyaki sub sandwich. This makes no sense at all. That she says she's got expensive health care in Kuwait. She spent a fair amount of money because it was shown that her conversion rates were not correct. So the amount of money that she actually spent on the grocery haul was more in Canadian dollars. And then you did lose money on an exchange. So unless she's being paid in Kuwaiti dinar, she would still have to lose money when she converts from Canadian dollars 
to that money. So there's money on, you know, when you're exchanging money and you're using an exchange service, they take a portion of that in order to make profit. You don't get exactly the same that you see dinar, dollar to dinar. It doesn't happen that way. You're going to lose on the exchange. So I don't know how they're, you know, getting the money from her YouTube account, how that's going in, how she's paying her Canadian taxes. Just really not sure. But regardless of that, she spent hundreds of dollars of Canadian dollars on food yesterday. And yet she's sitting down to a sub sandwich. And I don't know what the cost of these are in Kuwait. I have no idea. But to think that you have all that food in the house and now you're having to sit down and, and buy a sub sandwich. It either shows that you have no energy, no control. It just, I think for most people, it's just makes no sense. But I guess that's a reward you get for staying in Kuwait is that Salah's going to let you eat the takeout food. And maybe you compromise by buying that grocery haul food. And I'm so sad that all that veg is going to go to waste. You won't make any of those dishes that you spoke of. I, I, I don't think any of them will be made. It's so sad. I feel sad for the carrots. I hope Howie at least gets one carrot. Can we at least see Howie with the carrot? Bismillah. Wow. Very messy. Okay. Too many onions. Too many onions, bro. I need a bite. I'm so hungry. Uh, just before she takes a bite, do they ever give napkins to any of these places? And if the onions are grilled, I have all the grilled onions you want to give me. Raw onion, I do not like as much. I I will not, I don't enjoy raw onion. But if they've been grilled at all, oh my goodness. Mm, I'll eat all of those. Oh, well, maybe, oh, napkin. Yay! So a little bit of my background, I am a cardiac RN here in the United States and Foodie Beauty does not get a lot of exercise. She tends to stay in the house and lead a very sedentary life and now she is eating a huge amount of sugar there because teriyaki sauce I think is a sweeter sauce and then if it's anything like soy sauce, has probably a lot of sodium in that. Chicken teriyaki doesn't sound like something that would be native to Kuwait. So I'm thinking these types of foods are probably expensive as well. It's white bread. It's 12 inches of white sub bread. Processed meat, probably on that chicken. Uh, I don't know if it's fresh. And then it looks like all the vegetables, you know, the oils, the sauces. I'm curious to know how many calories are sitting there. I would not think that even half a sub sandwich of this type for foodie would be advisable. She's really much better off with a grain bowl. You know, if she wants to do a chicken teriyaki, I would recommend not even the rice because she eats far too much rice. Maybe doing a quinoa. Instead, I know she doesn't like it. And then with the chicken teriyaki and then getting a nice mix of vegetables, you know, getting some of those, the eggplants and all of these carrots and just maybe even baking them in the oven. So you're not putting them as much oil or air frying and then putting those on top. And then if you want to add a little bit of a drizzle of extra teriyaki or something, then to make it softer, then that sounds like a much healthier option. But she's not worried about health. One of our 
things that we've heard her talk about is bed rotting and Rose Thorne reacts covered this a little bit and I think I want to cover this a little bit further because it's a trend that I think is quite worrying if somebody like Foodie Booty were to start to participate in because I have a feeling she's trying to make herself not able-bodied in order to go on a sympathy and to be able to say that people are bullying her and it is becoming something that she's choosing to do. So now we're watching somebody choose to eat themselves into poor health to go on a sympathy so she cannot be bullied by people. She has so much joy when she's eating. That's, you know, obviously something we all enjoy is having good food. I had a lovely meal last night, something I hadn't eaten in a while. But it's all she enjoys. And she needs to be adding more enjoyment into her life other than just food. Yes, Alan. My brain wouldn't even work. I also, just before she keeps going on, did want to point out she is an unmanaged type 2 diabetic. And so when this young lady eats this type of meal, my concerns as a healthcare professional is that she is in a foreign country on a tourist visa, not being followed up by a primary care physician. She has a tendency to self-diagnose herself and give her own disorders without actually having followed up with proper medical care in order to gain these. For example, when she discusses having sciatica, which I am very doubtful, that is what is what she is experiencing. So she's not had a full diagnostic MRI to show whether that is what's happening. So you cannot just sit and Google things and then diagnose yourself. That's not something that a unlicensed or even a licensed individual can do. You do have to have the proper diagnostic testing in order to reach the diagnosis. So she is very much somebody who's going to use all types of medical and disabled terminology to gain favor with her audience and to hopefully gain more money through super chats and super thanks and memberships because people are going to feel sympathetic to this person not feeling well. But she's playing everybody. I don't want chips. Potatoes. I'll show you what I ate so far today. If I have to eat another home cooked meal right now, I'm going to faint. Okay, so. Did you hear her? If I have to eat another home cooked meal, I'm going to faint. That is a very interesting statement, Foodie. For somebody who is at home and that's all you should be doing is cooking because you talk about wanting to do these cooking videos and how much you love to cook and you're going to do all that, I think you just told on yourself pretty well there that you don't enjoy it. You much rather be a little less active in the kitchen and have food just arrive at your door. So all that food, I have a good feeling. Is going to go to waste because it's not even been one day. I've had years <laughs> where I have cooked at home and taken food from home to work and not bought any takeout at all. I don't tend to buy takeout. So for most of us, that's the norm. It just shows to the level of laziness you have. <laughs> I just like really was craving something takeouty. It looks like she just had a really big breakfast. 
the oats actually were the one good thing. And then she looked like she just ate two things that her diabetic physician recommended she not eat. Like eggs and processed meat. So she that was two things. And she's done. Just kind of soak that in. And think about who's making the statement. And how busy she is in her life. If she was working a 40-hour-a-week job, had five kids, was managing a lot of things, and had cooked those two meals, I'd get it. But that's all she has to do. She doesn't even get out and walk or exercise or go to the store. Just let that sink in. So I have 12 inch chicken teriyaki with cheddar cheese, lettuce, tomato, onion, pickles, green peppers, black olives, sweet teriyaki, sweet onion teriyaki sauce, mayo and Southwest sauce, salt and pepper. That sounds like a heart attack between two sub buns. So what's going on? I missed you guys. Mm. I was reading these Reddit articles and I went down a loophole, and one article wrote, led to another, as usual. So messy. Oh, my gosh. Sorry about that. I better take this off. I don't want it to get... If you knew you were going to eat a sandwich with so many toppings, why did you have such a loose-fitting garment around your neck? I think you do that on purpose. There is theories in the community that you do that on purpose. I'm going to speed you up to 1.5 because you talk really slowly, foodie. And uh, I just want to show the comparison between foodie's normal voice speed and then obviously how she uh, speaks the, on a 1.5 because it's going to take too long otherwise to react. Super messy. So, anyway, it's about the article was about um, dumb things that people were bullied for in school. <laughs> and this one girl, she was bullied for standing next to a tree, and they used to call her Tree Girl because of that. As we always say, Foodie still lives in high school. I really feel like she wants to take herself back in a little time capsule and become a high schooler and redo life again. There's some reason why she hangs around there. I mean, we all wish we could have had maybe some different outcomes while we were younger in our lives and everybody has a little nostalgia on occasion. But this is like constant content for her. Why would you be looking at that? Why don't you look at ways to get out and, and improve and cook all this food you put together wasn't that whole that meal those two meals you put together what was overnight oats that's like the easiest thing to do girl and it reminded me of like my own problems in elementary school of being bullied oh and another thing though oats do help with lowering cholesterol i do understand they can do some spiking of the blood sugars so uh, just be cautious with that too. Just take a look and make sure the, the amount of oats that you are consuming are within the required amount for somebody who's supposedly managing a type 2 diabetic lifestyle. And that's all about portion control. 
it's not about taking out every food, though probably candy bars aren't your friend, or cookies, or a lot of this bread that you're sitting here eating. But if you are going to do it, at least control the portions. What you're eating is for a man who just spent five hours on a construction site. Not somebody who cooked some scramble egg. For the dumbest things. One of them was because I used to get, I used to wear these like matching jumpsuits from Sears. Sears was like the department store when I was growing up. And for Christmas, for a special occasion, I would always get gifted these hideous matching jumpsuits like I do not like the finger licking. I'm just going to say. Or the loud mouth sounds, which I am apologizing for now. It would just be like, you know, purple. I remember when I had was purple. It had those stirrups, straps at the bottom to keep your pants on, I guess. I don't know what, what they were for. To keep your pants tucked into your shoes, I guess. Anyway, matching purple sweater. And it had like little frilly bows on it. Well, somebody thought you liked it. Or they didn't like you, and that's why they bought no, it for do. you. <laughs> well, I was getting that because it would be a box shape. They were packaged in like white boxes that said Sears, and the box almost like a cake box, but longer. You know what I mean? It would open. And of course, I could never complain. Be rude, you know. I was actually taught to say thank you no matter what I received, so. Yes, and that's how we were all brought up, to be grateful for even the worst gifts your granny gave you. Did it feel great to get things you didn't really like and not really be able to speak out about it? Yeah, sometimes it really did suck, but it did teach a certain amount of humility. I guess if things were understood better by adults and managed better, because the adult does not want to upset the other adult who gifted that to you, even though it probably would have been very easy to have taken you to Sears and exchanged it to something you rather have worn. And that's what an adult who isn't worried about their image to the other adult would have explained to the other one, saying, hey, we're so appreciative that you got her this gift from Sears. She doesn't really like the purple. Would you be terribly upset if we took it back to Sears and exchanged it for an outfit that she would prefer to wear? Would that be a problem? Now there could be certain relatives who would be snooty about it. Okay, and maybe you never get another gift again. But if your mom then just stood up and then took you over and still took you to this Sears, because they probably had a pretty good exchange policy in those days, and exchanged the item to something you would have liked, at least then something, you know. But I think that's part of what did not happen in those days. And so it was more about how they wanted to show respect. And But, it, you know, there is always that thing about, you know, giving kids really horrible items when you're an adult and unaware that that's maybe not what kids like nowadays. And I think... I would always say that having a conversation with the parent first before you use your money is, is more advisable. That's why nowadays people just give gift cards. <laughs> no more clothes, I'm going to get bullied. But foodie, get over it. <laughs> anyway. This is my point. I remember in grade eight, I apparently looked like Ricky Lake. So that was my nickname, Ricky Lake. Or, um, so messy. Also, like, I had different hairstyles. So that was when I had, like, shorter hair. When I had long hair and bangs straight across, they called me China. Uh, girl, I just want to point out, you got a big old piece of teriyaki sauce mixed with mayonnaise and whatever else is going, juices are going on there on, on the side of your chin. And you're 
almost 40 years old. You're just shy of your 40th birthday. I just, I know that you like the hand food. And to your hands, I'm going to say today, I'm I'm going to do a little bit of a physical assessment here as, a, as an RN. Your hands are very swollen today. And that's not due to weight. That's due to holding sodium. And you eat so much bread and so portions that are huge and restaurant foods, which contain huge amounts of sodiums. Bread has salt. Cheese has salt. The chicken, if it's from a Chick-fil-A, has been brined in salt. You look swollen. Oh, my God. When you put too many things on your sub, it's chaos. I cannot move. Um, just really dumb names. Anyway, I thought that was funny. I'm sure there's other things. I can't think of. Of course, being called welfare girl, too. I think all of us suffered as children with nicknames. I don't think there's one kid, no matter how rich, how perfect, that was not unscathed with another child teasing. It just seems to be a really horrendous part of human nature. And so you either just don't perpetuate it by not being a bully yourself. Oh, fancy that thought, foodie. That maybe you saying some really awful things about Mexicans and the and country of Mexico. Maybe that could be reflected upon today. Some of the other outlandish remarks that you've made against other nations, making fun of people's accents, all of these things. Maybe you need to reflect on that for a little bit and try to see when you are perpetuating the role of the bully. You think reaction channels are bully channels to you, but in reality, we have different niches and we use it to educate people. I'm a registered nurse, and there's no way that I would recommend any patient with any type of comorbidity history and chronic illness history, such as you have, to sit and eat this type of food, especially with the sedentary lifestyle that you lead. But these are choices that you make and choices that you keep making because you want to become unable to care for yourself any longer. And you don't want to be mobile. You don't like getting out and walking anymore. So if you can get a good excuse not to have to ever leave your bed and bed rot, as you like to call it, then you're going to do it. That's really sad. The sad part is, is that you, <laughs> you keep still getting enough money on YouTube. But I think your money is falling, which is why you had that terrible song sung by Salau and trying to introduce him more into content and the hopes to increase the views to your content. But you're talking about bullying when you have been the bully. You're historically a bully. And so if you wish the bullying to stop, then you have to be the first person to start doing that in your own life. And then maybe then you'll find that the bullying ends. I don't know. Just an idea. It was so much on chicken. Last night. Or the last time I slept anyway. <laughs> Where? Um I just want to give a heads up. This video is exactly 17 minutes long where we maybe had, a, you know, a few seconds of the cameo ahead of time and her little intro. She has eight 
in under 17 minutes, two 12 inch subs or two six inches to make 12. But those six inches are huge. I mean, those things are filled to the brim. It looks like soaking in all types of oils and stuff because she loves those oils. Girl, chia seeds aren't going to help with the blood sugar spike on this. The chia seeds can't do this for you. You're just so far gone from a chia seed. So I came for a visit to Canada. And I took him to uh, my favorite restaurant. <laughs> Saint Hubert, one of them. And yes, I know I do dream about food a lot. So... <laughs> I don't even want to say. We got Walk. there. And we're seated outside. And it starts to get cold. And we're seated kind of next to somebody. So I'm like, let's go inside. So we go inside and this waiter's like, oh, sure, right this way. They see us inside, but they see us right in front of this elderly couple who are like really close to us like this. I don't even know where she is located in the story. Oh, we the we To the area with booths because it's more empty, which is usually the other way around. And I make sure the table can move. And it did, so. I was about to say, how does she squeeze into a booth? <laughs> how? It's got one heck of a booth. It's a live. booth for a family of eight. We lost. Oh. So we're sitting now, doing the usual couple stuff. I love you, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> That right there tells me she's not in a couple. Not to say that there's not been times when I was in my last long relationship, which lasted for about, I don't know, it was a, off and on for 15 years pretty much. But anyway, I know there were times when if we were out on certain times, we would certainly have affection towards one another publicly. But we certainly just like would sit there saying, I love you, and you know, the stuff couples do, which makes me think that they didn't talk about anything. Because usually couples are talking about stuff, discussing stuff, talking about their work, so many other things. You know, they're just plotting their stuff together. I mean, oh, come on, girl. Just, you're trying to do the, the romance novel. I don't even know any names of any romance novel companies because I don't read those types of books. <laughs> I want to say one was Bloom or something. The other, I, I got the name of the person wrong last time and I and now it's still coming in wrong, so I'm not going to say it. Anyway, let's go. And then a dessert comes for him and it's a mid fee. It's a French dessert. I'll show you a picture. It's really good. I realize that everything I bought is like you have to cook it. So cooking three times a day, I don't know how people do it. It's hard. Tiny violin, I know. Uh, oh my gosh. Oh, people are going to roast you to heck on this video, girl. You need to just... Oh my God. Did you really just say how do people cook three times a day? And you try to let your audience know you're some type of Kuwait housewife or that you respect Italian grandmas. I don't think I'm even going to tell you how people manage it. Because you're, if you can't get onto a YouTube video and all you bought was some vegetables that you could easily wash and roast and, and air fry or whatever you want to do. But obviously what that requires is if you bother because it's, it's a better idea in case there's any pesticides, is to clean the vegetables first and not with uh, soap detergent from the dishes because that's going to make your food taste like soap detergent, okay? So if you want to get a, a specialty vegetable wash, there's some, though, you got to be careful because they can be just as toxic as the stuff on the vegetables. So just be cautious. Clean your vegetables and then cut them into some big pieces and just slice them up, even the eggplant. If it's good eggplant, you shouldn't have to even salt it to get the sourness out. If it's a good eggplant, you just roast those things, girl. You just make a ton of it. You just do a lot so that you can keep adding those roast vegetables to different proteins 
and grains throughout the days and grains other than rice. Cannot believe. I mean, everybody knew you weren't going to know what to do. You were talking about making that eggplant dish, those grape leaves. But they actually take skill and knowledge of how to cook those items in the kitchen. I was surprised that you were being that ambitious. So I'm not shocked that what we saw was some overnight oats and some scrambled egg with some type of dead looking meat next to it. You don't even know what it was, bacon? I have no idea. <laughs> At least I have food, I know. All right, so the dream, yeah, it was weird. And then we were staying at my mom's. Oh, this is a dream. Pudding. I'll be right back. Oh, God, it's I not even a real life time. event. <sighs> I made a lot of these. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I'm saying, so okay. My first I'm sorry, it's me. People say I don't stay on track. I understand. I understand now that it was not a real life thing that Foodie was having. It was a dream. Because she said she had a dream, and then she talked. said, I know I talk a lot about food, and then she talk talked about a restaurant. And I didn't know if she just went off into a restaurant story. But the restaurant story is obviously a dream. So she was dreaming that Salah was telling her he loved her? Or she just add that lie into the story? Oh, gosh. Okay. Well, I went off on a tangent there that I didn't need to do. Oh, well. It's going to stay in the video anyway. <laughs> my video. My channel. It was like a burnt bit. A few burnt bits. Uh that's that's a that's the only thing missing is uh raisins what the heck is that is that a dessert oh my god it's like a custard or something you can taste the burn something with burn Uh oh. Smoky rice pudding. That's a flop. Because I burned the bottom of the pan. <laughs> Sorry. When you burn the bottom. Okay. So now we know the mystery of the rice. And where did five kilos of rice go? And all that milk she buys. Foodie has been making, obviously, rice pudding. Oh. <laughs> uh -huh. She just doesn't show it very often because she certainly wasn't purchasing, you know, she wasn't cooking a lot of that rice that we saw, not often. A lot of the rice that she was eating was a different grains of rice from takeaway places. So it seems like she just gets these larger ingredients to make some very large um, things like, you know, rice put. Oh my God. I don't even want to know what that pan looked like in that kitchen. Oh. Oh, God, there's a burnt pan. How long is it just going to hang out burnt with the rice pudding? Oh, oh, and she put some of these little cups. So she probably got a whole. Oh, my. Oh, that or that was just what she could save from the burnt rice because she probably fell asleep when it was cooking. <laughs> God, you're going to set your apartment on fire. You need to be careful. <laughs> like burn the bottom of the pan, of the pot. That's all. It, the taste permeates everything you're cooking and ruins it. Yes. Do you think I didn't make a big batch because I wanted to try it? Oh, girl. Anyway, my guys, I'm not going to bother you with details about this dream, but I don't know. I have really vivid dreams all of the time. At least every night I dream. I don't remember the last time I slept where I didn't dream. I mean, everybody dreams apparently every night, but a lot of people don't remember their dreams. And like my grandmother was like that. She had dreams so rarely that she, on the odd time that she did, it would be like a big deal for her. She would have to tell me all about it. But yeah, she like never had, um, she never had dreams. I remember her telling you that. I don't know if it's the food stains, my computer, but I feel that her skin is a little more blotchy here around her chin region. Like I'm seeing darker blotchier spots and she's talking about a grandma <laughs> poor grandma grandma can't say whether she wants to be discussed or not girl dreaming about being in a restaurant and i don't believe that was the first time you tried to make rice pudding as i said i think you make rice pudding on the regular 
Because he went through a big old bag of rice going, now the rice back again. And the milk, you have all that milk. Mm, now we know what's going on. So you look very edematous, foodie. Watch your salt intake. So anyway, we also went and got some decorations for Ramadan. I was going to film that, but the stores were so busy. And like really jam-packed. Like, <clears throat> excuse me. And it was really loud. So... I don't know. Maybe um, you could have B-rolled and not had you in it. Is it embarrassing to bring a camera out with people around preparing for a religious holiday? Is that seen as something not acceptable? I don't know. I don't see why people would not be filming festivities preparing. That would be fun to see. That would actually be interesting to see, but I don't, it's just, you don't have to be in it if you don't want to be in it. But we would just like to see it. It'd be interesting. Anyway, that's wild. I will do shopping vlogs like when we're out, whenever it's like, you know, better conditions. <laughs> that's why I like to film when there's no one around because you don't have to worry about that. Like people looking at you filming and stuff. I don't know. Um. So yeah, anyway. Which is something I, I think she's more embarrassed that she thinks people are then staring at her than staring at what's happening with the filming. I think she has reached a point in her size that she is now thinking everybody looks at her and notices her size and is probably surprised at how big she is. I had a friend probably half her size and she would get very upset people would not even be looking at her and she would just assume people who are going about their, their day would be thinking about her. And then she would just flip out right there in a public space. And I would be extremely embarrassed by that because she would just be triggered by anybody looking in her direction. And I feel that that's kind of where Foodie is at this moment, that she's just at a place where somebody looks her way and then she got to flip out on them, you know, or think they're staring at her. It's all about her. You know, the other person can't be going about their day. I didn't really care about uh, too much in Canada, although I still did sometimes. I don't know. Sometimes you get shy a bit, like, I don't know, especially when I was doing karma bombs and people would pull up beside me. I'd be like, <laughs> can you not park somewhere else? Uh, anyway, I guess that's it. So, yeah, I'll see you guys. No, they can park wherever they want. And I understand it's frustrating because I do film content sometimes outside with my puppy dog. We're walking and doing our steps. And so I understand it can be embarrassing. But I understand that we are used to people now being out with cameras and creating content. So I think a lot of people know what's going on. People just, you know... Part of it is like you may think to your back of your mind, like, oh, you think you're, you know, people are going to think that you think you're special, <laughs> you know, when you know you're, you're not special. But I mean, other than that, I don't think there's any other, you know, you just, if you, if that's what you're doing, that's what you do. And it used to be if there was a film crew setting up, you know, people would be excited. But I guess the difference is now there's a little bit difference about, seeing an individual filming themselves and then how is that perceived by people uh, it's a little different isn't it it's a little different but if you're making money and that's how you make your living then go ahead and do it plenty of creators walk around in public spaces and film i think in california it's probably easier because they're so used to that stuff they don't even care new york they don't care there's certain cities that are so accustomed to people filming that they don't care but I'm sure there's places that you could have gone that were a little bit quieter. You're just lazy. Lazy. Lazy content. Uh, later. My content, lazy. Uh, whenever. Lately. Catch you on the flip side. <laughs> Remember that saying? <sighs> How are my pillows placed for you guys today? <laughs> if my eyes could roll in the back of my head, they would definitely. All right, guys. So that's it. I take care. Say bye. All right, fair day. I'm going to take you off my screen now since you gave us such a inspirational 12-inch chicken teriyaki sub sandwich haul today. I'm so glad to hear that you're already 
exhausted from cooking at home. That says everything. <laughs> I would then think that you're going to have to try to figure out ways to make more money, girl. And maybe spend less money on the groceries and just be dead honest that, or maybe you want to get a chef in that you could spend, spend, you know what, could be less expensive than the takeout is potentially hiring a chef that could come in and show you some traditional Arabian dishes that could be made like those grape leaves and that eggplant, or as we would say in the UK, aubergine dish. That would be really fun. You could, I'm sure they're not that expensive. You could probably get them for a few hours over to your house. You could set up and film. It could be in the comfort of your home. You could learn some stuff. I mean, that would be actually really interesting content. And you could even, I'm, I'm even going to give you some tips here. You could release it initially as members only and then release it to the general public. So you give your members a nice little content with a chef going to show a recipe, maybe find one who's comfortable speaking in English. You can put the, you know, let them know it's going to be filled for content. They may like to promote themselves if they have a channel. I mean, there's so many opportunities because you have a large channel that you could actually get out and really reach people and do some really interesting things because they would be interested in going into a partnership with you to do things. But I would say that obviously you pay that person and pay them their fair salary ahead of time and get it in and ask them if they're comfortable with being filmed along with it. You'll pay them. I mean that, and then you won't end up wasting the food. And it would be a win-win for everybody. And you might actually find you get better views on that content. And you make a little bit more money. So it actually pays off in the end. And you get to eat and you get to see how much salt and how much is going into the food. And you can ask them to make it maybe a little more diabetic friendly. But I think that is just beyond your capacity of thought at this time. Because I think that would actually make for interesting content. Anyway, we are going to catch up with Foodie later, I hope at a different time and we will be able to get to this video and I think I will be able to catch up with you all and say hit the likes, hit the subscribe. If you do like this content, do come back and see us and I look forward to taking a quick peek -see and what foodie's got for us next? Take care.